Hey guys, Eddie here. Pictures are worth a thousand words, but pictures being displayed nicely in a browser on your screen compared with pixelated, squished, squeezed, or stretched pictures caused by bad design can translate to thousand versus thousand curse words. And I'm sure you would be experienced enough to know that nice words are hard to come by even with an awesome design. But earning thousand curse words is so easy with so little effort in bad or no effort in good design. No one wants bad publicity, so let's see how we can keep up our web page looking sharp, no matter user squeezes, stretches, or resizes browser to whatever shape. So in case you haven't watched our essential guide to display video, which I would recommend that you do, let's recap a bit. Users would be opening your web page in an absolute ton of diverse environments, from varying screen resolution to whether user is holding the mobile vertically or horizontally, or is user playing with resize handles of your browser window or looking at your web page from a CRT monitor or LCD screen, the layout of your web page would be responding accordingly and images within would need to respond as well. They will respond whether you wanted them to or not. Now imagine you designed your website with a reasonably mid-sized, say 1024 by 768 JPEG banner and use the min width and max width along with a percentage based width attribute. Yes, your web page would respond reasonably well for most devices with these settings. But what about the user who opens the page on 3840 by 2400 resolution or the user who's seeing your website on a mobile and turns it to portrait mode? Now, depending on the choices you made for the min, max, or width attribute, your banner would either be a barely recognizable image in the middle, horribly stretched, squished so nothing is visible, or most probably cropped in the portrait mode of mobile. The technique you used was probably okay to use 10 years ago, but with today's demands of supporting a very narrow mobile screen in portrait mode to a screen featuring very, very high resolution, a single image solution simply does not work anymore. To make matters worse, the browser downloads a high quality image just to be shown on a very small screen mobile device in portrait mode. Bottom line, there is no good way to know in advance the environment your web page would be loading in at the design time, and problems occur. This problem lingered on for a while until someone realized that it is in the HTML image tag the web page designer is responsible for specifying the image size to be downloaded in an unknown environment. So the browser simply downloads the image and then tries to fit it on the screen. Then someone realized that before downloading the image, the browser actually is aware of the environment it is operating in, the screen size, resolution, pixel density, almost everything there is to know. And the important line is, browser is aware of its operating environment before it downloads the image. So along came the source set attribute. That is the solution for responsive images we are going to focus in this video. Note that height, width, min max, min width, max width are also used in making images responsive, but they have been discussed in detail in earlier image related videos in the series. So we shall give them supplementary coverage here with primary focus on source set and picture elements. All right, so source set allows us to give browser not one, but a bunch or set of images to choose from for downloading and display. For the scenarios we covered earlier, it makes sense to have an image that is suitable for portrait mode, another one for small to medium resolution widescreen format, and yet another one for high and ultra high res display screens. Note we are not limited to three. It is totally up to you how many options you want to provide. The browser would choose the image that best suits the operating environment and download only that option from the set. Do remember that it is known to you, the web designer, and the browser that multiple images are being used. The user doesn't need to know. From user perspective, he is still looking at the same image upon resize. While there would be a slight jump or gap when the threshold is breached as the user resizes the browser using the resize handle or flips a mobile, the effort should be to keep the experience as smooth as possible. In short, ideally the image in source set should be the same image cropped or resized for different resolutions. More often than not, you would start with a full high resolution image and then resize and save smaller resolution images from that. And when it gets too small, you would crop out the sides or something. In essence, you're responsible for what should be shown to user on small and big screen, the browser is simply going to download and show the image suitable to the current size from source set. Okay, enough talk in abstracts. Let's first see what the source set attribute looks like 
and for comparison a standard image tag looks like this on the left now let's say we want to use two images now one for high res screens while the other for low to medium res screens so we would be using two images one called little one 640w.jpg which would be a 640 by 480 resolution image and another one for high res screens would be a fat one 1024w.jpg which would be a 1024 by 768 resolution image now let's use these with source set based image and compare that with the standard image quite different and complicated than the regular image tag right let's break it down and simplify but please take a good look as we explain each attribute one by one so source set is the set of images we are giving the browser to choose from the images are provided as a comma separated list and each entry in list is of format below. First would be the image file name and note that it doesn't need to have numbers like 640w or something. It could just be little1.jpg. It can be the file name or the full URL of the image. This is followed by space, followed by the intrinsic width of the image. That is the native or actual width of the image in pixels as it is saved in the image file. Like if you open the image file in a graphics editor like MS Paint on Windows, the width shown in status bar would be used here. We only use the width and ignore the height and browser automatically adjusts the image. The entire responsive image technique requires only the width of the image to work with. Now play cl close attention to the W suffix, which indicates that it's the width descriptor. There's another possible value of X, which we shall see later. Note if you use W descriptor for width, then sizes attribute in the image element is also required, otherwise it would not work. Remember the objective is to give browser enough information to choose the right image to choose from. Here we are giving it file names and telling them that this one is intrinsically 640 pixels wide and other is 1024 pixels wide. So when it needs to decide which image to prefer in say 1280 by 1024 resolution, it would know that suitable resolution to pick is the larger 1024 pixel file. But we don't let it guess. We suggest it the right size to use using the sizes attribute, which works like this. So a sizes attribute starts with a media condition. Though we haven't gone through this topic yet in CSS, media queries and conditions let you query and conditionally apply actions based on current environment, like screen resolution, aspect ratio, viewport, height and width, etc. In other words, it can be said that we are checking which state the screen is in. So in the example we are using, we are checking if the current viewport, a browser viewing area, is 800 pixels or less, then apply this condition. Okay, so after the media query comes a space, then this is followed by the width of the slot, the image will fill when media condition is true, that is 640 pixels. Note we are using a CSS concept in HTML in sizes attribute, which is usually discouraged, but required here as we need to tell browser what to do in certain situations. Additionally, note that you can use either pixel using px or vw suffixes here, which means width relative to viewport, like 50 vw to indicate image should take half the screen width. You cannot use percentages here though, but remember that 50 VW is a sort of percentage because one VW is 1% 1 of the width of the viewport, but you cannot use exact percentage suffix here. Uh, you need to use VW units or PX units only. Finally, you would note that the 1024 pixel entry does not follow the same pattern as is specified without a media condition. This is a fallback indicating that if media condition is in earlier entries is not satisfied or let's say not true, then use this size image. Additionally note browser would match media queries from first entry to the next until the fallback and as soon as it finds a matching one, it would use that and skip the rest. It wouldn't even evaluate them. So ordering media queries is really important. Let's go back to our example and evaluate the image element again. Now that we have pieces in place and browser encounters the image attribute with source set and sizes, it would test the media queries one by one until it finds one that matches the current screen environment or current screen size. 
Then it would take the value that is the slot size against that media query. The picked slot size would be compared with all the entries in source set one by one until a match is found. The image would be downloaded and displayed. In case no exact match is found, the browser would pick the first image that is bigger than the chosen slot size. You might be wondering why we have source attribute in the image element. And that is because source set is a newish attribute and many older browsers, and I mean really old browsers, simply don't support it. As a fallback, you specify the source attribute as well. So if a browser which does not recognize source set is parsing the image, it would load the image mentioned in source attribute rather than just showing the alt text. Remember I mentioned that source set attribute values can either have w or x suffix? Time to introduce the x suffix. x suffix, or more technically x descriptor, or pixel density descriptor is a way of specifying image variants to use for devices with different device pixel ratios. But is it any different from w descriptor? It means the same thing, right? Right? Well, somewhat true, as higher pixel density requirement implies higher resolution, but with a slight difference that we do not use sizes attribute with x descriptors. So it essentially means media conditions are not involved here. The browser would choose the right image variant from the source set based on its knowledge of screen pixel density. What does it all mean? It's confusing, right? I know. So let me first show you how it's written and then I'll explain. So we specify the source set like the previous example and but with the file names given, like the little one 640w.jpg, fat one 1024w.jpg, followed by a space and then a 1.6x entry. Similarly, the third entry, obese 1024w, is followed by a space, followed by 2x. These entries like 1.6x, 2x, 3x, represents the image variant to use for 2x or twice the standard pixel density environment. Yeah, it is still confusing. There is no easy way to explain it. So bear with me a little bit more and it would start to make sense. The browser is aware of the screen characteristics like resolution, size, aspect ratio, and screen or pixel density, etc. So when you load the web page in the browser, it checks depending on the current environment whether showing the first image, which is implied to be 1x since not provided, would be able to sufficiently show a sharp, crisp image in the slot. And if not, it would calculate which would be the most suitable image to show a sharp image. This is the simplest way of specifying images using source set and letting browser do the calculations and heavy lifting. But note that width descriptor is much more superior at the cost of you doing the heavy lifting with media conditions and all, but gives you finer control of what to display in certain conditions. I just used max width condition in our earlier example in the media query but there are lots of configuration options available to customize the behavior. Bottom line remains the same, that a screen has a resolution as well as a native pixel density that defines the number of physical pixels it has in each dimension. And the image pixels needs to densely populate the available space in order for image to look good. The same fixed size image would be less dense or pixelated on some screens than other. It's like air molecules in a balloon. The more air is packed inside it, the better it looks. Just keep these things related to pixel density in mind along with the fact that you can't mix width and pixel density descriptors and should pick one or the other. There is also a bandwidth saving aspect to this technique where browsers would pick low density image in data saving modes, saving user on data cost by picking low density or low size image variant to save him in data usage cost. Win-win for all scenarios. I'll explain this further later in the video near the end as it involves describing screen characteristics and right now I'm trying to keep you focused on the topic and the syntax. But don't miss the part as it would give you deep intuition to certain rules that I state. Moving on from the extra script now. So far our discussion has been around making image look sharp in different width and resolution devices and prevent blurriness or pixelation. Basically the screen resolution switching problem is the right term for this kind of problem. There's another related and equally important issue, which is that of art direction. To start off with basic issue, 
consider you have a panoramic shot of a bird sitting on a tree in a jungle to the right of the image. The image is wide enough to fit the entire width of high-res display, but suddenly user switches to portrait mode and the image is cropped. The bird, which was the center of attraction in the image, gets cropped out. You try to fix the problem by altering CSS to shrink rather than crop the image. Okay, now the bird is in the picture, but barely visible in a panoramic image shrunk to around one sixth of its original width in the best case. That is, user just flipped the screens and not resize the browser. Using different resolution variants would not work here as the problem is not with pixel density or resolution, but rather the semantics of the pictures are being altered. The image, though sharp and crisp with a huge pixel density, is not what you wanted it to be on a small screen. You finally realize that this problem can't be solved with a row resolution variant. The problem can only be solved with an altogether different image. The different image can be the same high resolution image edited for a different width, but you didn't outsource that editing to browser, which shrunk it. Instead, you provide a carefully edited image to browser by yourself, which would look good on a small width screen. In short, you provide a variant which is made for portrait mode by design and by choice, supposed to look great on a small screen or portrait mode and fitting nicely with the rest of the content on the page. The proper term for this kind of issue where shrinking the image for a smaller screen does not work and a new image is required is known as the art direction problem. And to get around the art direction problem, the fix generally involves using a picture element, which probably is something you never heard of before. So let's introduce it first. Picture element allows you to provide zero or more source elements and one image element as its contents, allowing you to show alternative versions of an image for different display and device scenarios. Each source element has its own media query, which would allow browser to pick up the closely matching variant from available source options. This is followed by a regular image element or IMG element. The IMG element here not only serves as a fallback in case browser does not support the picture element, it also lets browser know the size, width, alt, and other attributes of the image. Enough talk in space, let's see how it looks like. So we have a picture element with two sources for different resolutions along with an image fallback element as the content of the picture element. The source element here has the media attribute, which is the media query specifying the condition, which, if true, would make that source applicable and the corresponding image would be displayed. Media is an optional attribute Again, one must be careful that media queries are evaluated from start, and as soon as a match is found, the browser wouldn't bother looking at rest of the sources and use the identified source. So one must be very careful with order or sequence of media queries in picture element. Here I chose a parrot example, but as an advanced example, you can have multi-column images for high resolution settings which would collapse into a single column portrait if the resolution shrinks. Though one must consider the layout jump that would occur during resize as it might become annoying. In case you are wondering, the source set attribute is a proper source set attribute like the one we saw with the image example earlier. And you can provide multiple images along with sizes attribute as well here. So there's no stopping you from providing full source set with sizes attributes or just the source set with multiple images here with width or pixel density descriptors. But with the media attribute, that would be totally redundant. And even though syntax allows you to do so, you should not do so. Use the media plus source set combo instead. You can think of source elements as explicit instructions to browser compared to suggestions using source set with image elements. The last and important or required constituent element of picture element is the image without which nothing would work. This should be the last child element of the picture element. It is the fallback image to display if none of the media queries match or the browser does not support picture or source set elements. It is required for a reason and we shall see by end of the video. Last thing to note here is that you can use width descriptors in one source and pixel density descriptors in another with impunity. Right, I chose to show you this example from Google Chrome when picture elements were announced. 
Note, I am recording on a wide-ish screen, and you can see a cat lying down, yawning on the screen. But note, as I shrink the browser beyond a certain threshold, an image suitable to the narrow width viewport would replace the current one. Now have a look. See? OK. Now, if we inspect the page using right click and inspect, find the picture element. Yes, we can see the picture element itself. Note the thresholds are defined here as source elements. The lying down image for the 650 pixels get enlarged. And if I hover over, you can actually see the image. And then another source for 465 pixels or below the medium kitten image in which the kitten is, is sitting instead of lying down is being displayed. And then there's a small kitten example where it's all cuddled up. We didn't see that in action. So if we go here, see, and if I expand, yes, see, there are three images transitioning very smoothly, right? And before we move away, hats off to Google Chrome team for choosing the perfect images to demo the picture element. All right, when to use which technique? You should stick to image tag with source set and sizes if you're just trying to solve the resolution switching problem. Pay close attention to this. Picture element and its source child elements are instructions to browser to use your favorite image. In contrast, the source set with sizes in image tag is a suggestion for the browser. Browser knows best which image variant it must use for the current environment, which includes, in addition to pixel density, factors like network conditions and user preferences. Letting browser choose is a much better option if all you are trying to achieve is resolution switching fix, where your provided images are exactly the same image, fixing the pixel density issue or a low or high resolution issue only. You should switch to picture element if picture needs to change as the shrunk picture makes certain aspects like people in it barely recognizable. A cropping is making important aspects to be cropped out like our parrot example. Another use case is that of text, which becomes unreadable if a wide image is shrunk too much. If you have such a use case, use the R direction fix, that is use a picture element with a different image with readable text. Unless using fixed width images, always prefer width descriptors over the pixel density descriptors. Similarly, always prefer source set to picture element unless our direction is required. I'll explain this in further detail later in the video. So we have covered the syntax and this portion is dedicated to refining the concepts and building intuition. Starting off with the pixel density thing and to understand pixel density more, we first understand pixel more. We covered pixel in our video about display technologies, but let's recap a bit. A pixel is the smallest addressable unit of display on the screen. An entire screen is made up of millions of pixels, precisely the multiplication product of width and height of resolution of screen or display resolution. But here is the interesting bit relevant to our topic, which is there's a difference between physical, logical, and HTML or CSS pixel. Up until the end of 20th and start of 21st century, there was no difference in size of physical and CSS pixel, and a pixel was one over 96th of an inch. In other words, the pixel per inch measure, or PPI, was 96 for most, if not all, screens. But that started to change with the LCD technologies packing more pixels per inch. CSS pixel still is one 96th of an inch. But after introduction of LCD technology, the physical pixel moved on to 200s, 300s, and today even more than 500 pixels per inch. That introduced the menace of pixel density problem, where your web page instructions say, show this image at 200 pixel wide by 100 pixel high. Now on old CRT monitors, the image would show as expected. But on high PPI modern screens, the display mechanism would show the image diluted. This is controlled by another term called device pixel ratio, or DPR, which defines how many physical or device pixels would be required to show one CSS pixel. 
the ratio is one for a device with a PPI or pixel per inch of 96. But for a screen with, let's say, a PPI of 288, the device pixel ratio is 288 divided by 96, which equals 3. This means for an image that worked great on a CRT monitor when shown for, say, 200 CSS pixels, for an LCD screen with a device pixel ratio of, say, 3, you need to provide a 600 pixel variant of that image for it to look equally as good and of the same quality. Otherwise, the image would look artificially inflated, diluted, pixelated, or blurred. This is where pixel density descriptors come into play, where you specify 2x, 3x, 1.6x, 4x versions of your image, and your browser looks at the screen device pixel ratio and determines which is the best image for that screen. And that is where the limitation that you should use that as variants of same fixed size image also comes into play, as otherwise things start to get complicated. This is different than resolution switching, and hence the width-based variant used with sizes attribute, which is not applicable to pixel density descriptor, is superior in usage than pixel density descriptor, especially with flexible images. However, if your image is fixed size, then pixel density descriptor would work pretty well. It is definitely easier to use, but keep in mind it only cares about pixel density. If your screen is high DPR like 5, the browser would pick the big 5x image even if it covers only 10% of the screen as controlled by your CSS rules. This is such a waste and better way to say would be totally wrong. The browser should have picked a variant suitable for that small area, not the highest resolution huge image. I hope it makes sense why it must be used with fixed size images only and not flexible ones using percentages of VW units, etc. Right, picture elements come with a nice little attribute called type, which allows you to specify the type of image you are trying to show. If you are experimenting with newish image formats like SVG, APNG, JPEG 2000, WebP, etc., but not sure if browsers your users are using might support them, there's a way to do so now using the picture element, using the type attribute, where you can specify the MIME type of the image format being referenced in source set. Of course, the images used in source set must be of the same type. The browser would try to show the images in latest format, and if for some reason, the browser doesn't recognize the new formats, it would gracefully fall back to the image element at the end. Here's an example of the picture element using the type attribute where we first try to show an SVG image. And if that does not work, we, sh we try to show the WebP image. And if it does not work either, we fall back to our standard JPEG format, which is going to work in every browser. There is. There's one downside, however, that if the type is unsupported, it is going to disregard the entire source element, not just the type. How do we fix that? We want our resolution switching to work as well. Well, it turns out the picture element is truly unnecessary if you're strictly using it for resolution switching case, as it can be done easily using source set and sizes attribute on a standard image element. In that case, you can simply use a picture element to have source elements without media attribute and having type attributes to strictly work with sole purpose of giving your new image types a try. The main focus in such cases shifts to the fallback but required image element inside the picture element. Who says you can't use source set and sizes attributes in that one? Nobody. So if browser can't render your favorite image type, the fallback would work equally well for all kind of sizes and all. You can experiment with your favorite optimized image type at will, with nothing in the world stopping you. Note that if you have an SVG and you can get it working on your browser, the entire source set and sizes thing is unnecessary as it is highly scalable and would look good in, in any resolution or pixel density anyway. Your only concern is to ensure browser understands the SVG format and can fall back to the regular image if it can't. As a bonus item, do note that image element is not unnecessary fallback in the picture element. It is a critical piece, and all source elements are simply being used to feed the required source to the image element. Picture element is invisible on its own. 
it relies solely on the image element to do the job. We said a couple of times to prefer source set over picture elements unless being used for art direction. Just want to highlight why. The main difference is dictation versus suggestion. In source set, we suggest to browser which image variant to use using sizes attribute. But browser is the deciding authority and can take other information like network conditions, pixel density, etc. into account to decide whether it wants to use that variant or not. It's a lot more flexible and does not dictate the choice. Browser knows a lot more than you do. On the other hand, media attribute in picture element is a dictation or explicit instruction to browser purely based on device size. On a high density screen, browser would have no choice but to go for the super high res and equally high sized variant to show. And if your visitor is using a slow public Wi-Fi to browse the site, he might drop the idea of browsing the website, waiting for such images to download. So careful consideration needs to be given when using picture with media directives. Then there are other preferences browser can consider like whether you are on Wi-Fi or data or data on a mobile device and does user have data safe preferences or any other preferences defined to limit bandwidth or otherwise. Preferences and choices that would be overridden with picture element. I think you get the idea. Stick to source set for everything except art direction. Use picture with media attributes only when necessary. Well, I'm pretty tired talking nonstop about responsive images, and I'm sure your brain has stopped responding to responsive images by now as well. So it's time to close the topic for now. If you have any question, please feel free to comment, and I'll try to respond or compile the questions and make a follow-up video to cover any remaining stuff. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found it useful. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.